Okay, thank you for the opportunity given by the committee of the International Conference on Social Sciences, Humanities, and Management Studies. On this occasion, I will share about our research entitled Ambidexterity from Marketing Performance, Survival, and Growing Mood in Batik Industry. The research this time was carried out by four people. I'm the first author. My name is Willie. And then the second author is Professor Dr. Insinyur Sasmoko, MPD, MA, CIRR, IPU. The third author is Dr. Nkos Ahmad Huncoro, SEMM. And the fourth author is Dr. Pantri Hariyamti, SEMCOM. Talking about batik industry, first of all, uh, we have to take a look at the industry in Indonesia as a whole. Based on government regulation number seven, 2021, businesses in Indonesia can be divided into four main categories, micro, small, medium, and large businesses, where micro and medium enterprises are given to companies with revenue under 50 billion rupiah. MSMEs are the largest industrial sector in Indonesia, have a proportion of 99% and absorb 97% of workers in Indonesia based on uh, Kemenko. And contribution of creative industry to GDP in uh, 2018 equal to 1,105 trillion uh, rupiah. The leading subsectors of the creative industries are crafts, culinary, fashion, uh, which contribute 76% of GDP of the creative economy in Indonesia. The absorption of creative economy workers increased to 19.01 million people in 2019. The export value of fashion and crafts products reached 93.2% of the export value of the creative industry sector in 2019, which value 22.07 billion US dollar. The mapping of batik industry in Indonesia is seen as follows, where the total batik in Indonesia is 2,921 units, with a composition of 74% in Central Java, 6% in Bali, 5.9% in East Java, and 4% in Yogyakarta. However, why this research is about batik? Batik itself is a cultural heritage which was declared by UNESCO as an intangible heritage on October the 2nd, 2009. UNESCO mentions batik as the techniques, symbolism, and cultural surrounding hand-dyed cotton and silk garments known as Indonesian batik permit, the leaves of Indonesians from beginning to end. Batik is dyed by proud uh, craftspeople who draw designs on fabric using dots and lines of hot wax. Thus means that which can be categorized as batik is only batik tulis, batik cap, and batik lukis, while printing with batik motifs cannot be said to be batik, but it is an imitation product of batik. There is a unique phenomenon regarding exports and imports of batik in 2015, which uh, batik exports reached uh, 185.04 million US dollar and then decreased until 2019 rose little bit uh, to 54.36 million US dollar, while the import volume of batik products has actually increased. Import volume reached 3.2 US dollar, uh, million US dollar, I mean, in 2016, then increased sharply to 100 and 6.45 million US dollar in 2019. 
Based on the literature review, it is known that one of the main problem that can cause the phenomenon is marketing performance, which has become a big agenda and strategic plan for the Balai Besar Kerajinan dan Batik. The method used in this research is a liter literature study from research conducted around marketing performance, marketing ambidexterity, firm performance, and organizational ambidexterity. Interviews with industry players and academics were also conducted to strengthen the phenomena that occur in the batik industry. There are some key interviewees as the experts in batik such as Insinyur Indra Cahyani, SS, MLA, MMSE, uh, PhD, the owner of Gallery Batik Penny and uh, the owner of BatikU.com. And then Nene, says the manager of Rumah Batik Tuanyonya, William Wimpy, the owner of Chanting Hijau Batik, and uh, he was the Putra Batik Nusantara 2014. Fandi, the owner of Kencana Pajajaran, Ika, the owner of Batik Culture. And uh, from this interview, we get the insight that Batik industry faces many obstacles due to technological disruption, changes in the business ecosystem due to the COVID pandemic, as well as competition with the imitation Batik products. Uh, chairman of the Association of Indonesian Batik Craftsmen and Entrepreneurs, Komarudin Kudia, said that during the pandemic, many small batik industries, almost 50% of them, could not survive and eventually went out of business because no buyers came to buy batik at their place. The batik industry really, really needs to apply this ambidexterity principle because it is experiencing enormous challenges. Often, batik products are considered old-fashioned, still very traditional. The essence value of batik are starting to be disguised by the many batik pattern printing textile products at low prices. Based on the literature review and the discussion with batik industry, the author find that in the typical batik industry, ambidexterity is something that is very much needed considering that the batik industry must be able to exploit opportunities while also being able to flexibly explore new ex opportunities. Exploitation of opportunity in uh, the batik industry is that the batik industry must be able to maintain unique traditional culture values and the originality of batik, meaning that batik is handmade and has high artistic value, and it is unique in each of its products. Exploration of opportunities that must be carried out by the batik industry is to adopt technology in terms of production, batik coloring, materials, etc., as well as in terms of market channels, payment systems, proximity to customers, brand strengthening, and so on. Ambidexterity firms marketing performance is a marketing performance in which the right hand doing the exploration and the left hand doing the exploitation can synergize so that they are more flexible and can adapt to the circumstances. The ambidexterity of the firm's marketing performance is very important and is related to improving performance. In the batik industry itself, with the use of social media, batik subur in the Bandung area, West Java, which initially could only sell about 10 fabrics per month by conventional selling, is currently selling both offline and online and can reach sales of 200 to 50 batik fabrics per month. Research conducted by Irhan Dayaningsi at Batik Nulaba Pakalongan City. Batik Nulaba, which initially only sold on the spot and expected customers to come and shop at the place, began to implement an online sales system through the website. 
e-commerce platforms, and also social media, so that it managed to increase its market share and sales to other cities, and managed to sell 200 items per month only from the new online sales. The author concluded that by knowing that the ambidexterity firm's marketing performance is very important and relevant to the problems in the batik industry, it can be said that in order to survive and even thrive in the challenges that exist, the batik industry need to have a good ambidexterity firm's marketing performance. And here are our references. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Let me give back the screen to the moderator. Thank you.